Hey what's up guys, welcome to Serp Bros. In this video we're going to be talking about ether channels. If you've seen the STP video, you might recognize this diagram. What we have here is three redundant switches. They're redundant because if any one switch or cable fails, the other two can still communicate. We can take this redundancy further though. Instead of just having one cable between switches, we can have multiple. But as you can probably imagine, this brings another set of challenges. Let's zoom in on the bottom two switches so I can show you what I mean. Okay, so assuming you are familiar with STP, you'll know that we essentially have a switching loop here. So STP, doing what it does best, will block one of these ports. But this isn't what we want. We want to take full advantage of our extra cables and extra bandwidth. So what we can do instead is group the ports together on each switch. This is an ether channel. The ether channel creates its own logical interface and STP will put this interface into the forwarding state. Now we can take full advantage of the extra cable and the extra bandwidth that comes with it. Ether channels will even load balance over each cable. So now our 100 megabit ethernet cable has become a 200 megabit ethernet cable. And if one cable is pulled out or it fails, no problem. Ether channels will just keep using the remaining cables. This stops STP from needing to reconverge anytime a cable fails or is pulled out. Once you find your way down the hall and to the rack, you can replace the cable and everything is back to full speed again. Okay, so some points on ether channels. They act as one logical interface. This allows traffic to keep flowing even when a cable is unavailable. It's also a way to avoid sending the same data back down the other cable and causing a loop. This is because a switch will not send data back through the same interface it received it on. We only have two cables here, but you can have up to eight parallel cables in one ether channel. There are three methods to configuring ether channels. You can manually set it, or you could use either PAGP or LACP to negotiate whether or not to join an ether channel. Now it's recommended to use negotiation rather than statically assigning it. This way you avoid any misconfiguration. And as you've already seen, ether channels will load balance the traffic. There are some requirements for ether channels to work. You will need to make sure that all ports in the ether channel has the same duplex. These days it's usually full. Speed. So you couldn't have some ports running at 100 megabit and then some running at one gigabit. That just wouldn't work. They all need to be either an access port or a trunk port. You would usually be doing this on trunk ports. It's worth noting if you do use an access port, they need to be on the same VLAN. If you use trunk ports, they need to have the same allowed VLANs and the same native VLAN. You also need the same STP interface settings, such as port priority. I mentioned there are three choices when configuring ether channels. You can either set it manually or use either link aggregation control protocol, LACP, or port aggregation protocol, PAGP, to negotiate the ether channel. The reason it's recommended to use negotiation rather than setting it manually is because you run the risk of misconfiguration, which could end up with one side using ether channels and the other side not. This means that data could, in theory, be sent from one switch and then the other side could send it back on the other port. In very 
specific situations, you could end up with a switching loop. And if you've seen the STP video, we all know what switching loops do to your network. The better option is to use either the Cisco proprietary protocol PAGP or the IEEE standard LACP to negotiate whether or not to become an Ether channel. When configuring Ether channels on the switch, you will need to remember the keywords and what they mean. On both sides of the cable, you will need to match these keywords with the protocol you are trying to use. So if you use the on on keyword, this will statically set the ether channel. Desirable desirable. Desirable is the proactive option for PAGP. It will reach out to the other side and say, hey, want to join my PAGP ether channel? Desirable auto. Auto is the passive option for PAGP. It will respond to desirable port messages, but it won't put in the work. If you have an auto auto configuration, both ports will just not speak to each other and no ether channel will form. Active active. So active is the proactive option for LACP. This is the same as desirable for PAGP. Again, it will reach out to the other side and try and form an ether channel. Lastly, active passive. Passive for LACP is the same as auto for PAGP. It will respond to active port messages, but it won't proactively try and form an ether channel. So you can't have two passive ports or an ether channel just will not form. So we'll go through a quick config demo. But before we start though, you're gonna see the terms channel group, port channel, and ether channel. It can be a bit confusing at first, but just think of all three as the same thing. I'll open up my first switch. Enable. Configure terminal. And I'll use the interface range command to select fast ethernet 0, 1 and 2. So the command we're going to use is channel group one, which is the number of the ether channel we're creating. This number needs to be the same on the local switch, but can be completely different on the neighbor switch. Then we'll type mode. And if I do the question mark command, we can see the options we looked at earlier. For this example, I'm going to use the active mode and create an LACP ether channel. That's it for this switch, I'll open up the neighbor. And we'll do the same. Enable, configure terminal, select the interfaces using the range command. And again, I'll type the command channel group one mode active. So I could have used a different channel number and I could also have used the passive mode command instead and it would have still worked. We should now see our new ether channel come up. Cisco will call this a port channel. There it is, our port channel is now up. I'll exit out of here and now run a show IP interface brief command. You'll see here way at the bottom that we have a new port channel interface. This is our logical ether channel. I can also run a show spanning tree VLAN one command. And we can see that STP is using the single port channel interface that is actually using two cables and has put it into a forwarding state. Another good show command is the show ether channels summary. This will show us the port channel and which ports belong to it. It also has some flags at the top, which will tell us the state each port is in. 
using this, we can see that our port channel is a layer two, and also it is in use. Both our fast ethernet ports are bundled in with a port channel. If there's been some sort of misconfiguration, you may see the D flag, meaning it's down. You can even run a show interfaces port channel one command to see all of the information about this logical interface. You may note here that the bandwidth shows 200 megabit, which is two times our 100 megabit cables. The configuration really is that easy. The challenge comes when you've configured it and it doesn't work. This is usually down to some kind of misconfiguration. In this case, what you would do is first check the right modes have been used, then double check the requirements to make sure everything matches. That's it for EFA channels. As always, if you've liked this video, then let us know by liking, leaving a comment and subscribing. The feedback from you really is what keeps the videos coming. Thank you for watching.